The billionaire tax never had a chance of being passed. Why? Because you're not going to tax the rich people any more than you're going to tax the other people with all kinds of cockamamie, stupid tax law. This sounds really good. You have all the politicians running out with their virtual pitchforks, yelling and screaming, screw the billionaires. Those horrible, horrible people who have created hundreds of thousands of jobs and employed millions of people and literally printed millions of millionaires in our society. They're so bad, we should go after them. Now, you can argue that there's all kinds of things that need to change around the tax law. I'd argue that we actually should simplify it. But the specific issue around taxing the billionaires was always stupid. It's still stupid, and in the future, it will be stupid. Why? Because the way that they wanted to do it was they essentially had two components. One, they were going to discriminate against people simply for being successful. And if you live in a society that condemns success, then you're ultimately going to lead to demise. The whole point of capitalism is that you can use the technology and the opportunity and various tools at your disposal to build a life of wealth and happiness and financial security. One of the very, very, very big misunderstandings when it comes to wealth in America, 80% of Americans inherited $0. 33% of Americans that are millionaires literally never made more than 100K. The only reason why we're trying to take more money from the private sector is because the public sector is drunk. They are spending and spending and spending, and they're spending money because it's not their money. There's not a single person in the public sector that would be spending as much money as they are if it was their money. Instead, they're spending your money. They're spending my money. They're spending my brother's money and they're spending every other citizen in America's money. Today, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, she gave a couple of quotes. And this was a fantastic article by Matthew Bellavere uh, from CNBC. He, he laid this out perfectly. Janet Yellen said, we tried to design a package of revenue raisers that would be acceptable to members of Congress. We pared back on some rate increases that weren't acceptable to members of the Senate. Then she went on to say, the razors we have, though, are appropriate and they're fair. While there isn't mark-to-market billionaires tax, I think it's been agreed that individuals earning high incomes will pay a surtax on their income tax rates. That hits really high income individuals. The only reason why they are trying to raise taxes is because they are spending more money. They are trying to spend $1.75 trillion for what? Nobody knows. They didn't even read the legislation. It has changed so many times that if you went right now and you pulled every member of Congress and the Senate into a room and you said to them, here are all of the various topics, please tell me whether this is in the bill or not. I guarantee you that they would be confused. They have no clue what is in this stuff because it is impossible to read thousands of pages of legislation that is changing over and over and over and over again. And then to simply continue to say it's free. There's not a person in the world that is actually being honest with themselves, that says we're gonna spend $1.75 trillion, but it costs zero. That's not how math works, that's not how the economy works, and that sure as hell how, isn't how common sense works. So we go on and we look, here is what did get passed. The massive spending bill would impose a 15% minimum tax on corporate profits by large corporations. They're gonna adopt a 15% minimal global tax that has been brokered by Janet Yellen. Then there's a 5% surtax rate on individual income above $10 million. Oh, you're rich? Just an extra 5% for no reason. That rate would rise another 3% on income above $25 million. And then the Democrats' plan also includes a 1% surcharge on corporate stock buybacks. Now, there's a lot of people who are watching this who are going to say to themselves, you know what? That doesn't sound too bad. 15% minimum tax, 15% global tax, 5% on people making $10 million in income, 3% more on people making $25 million in income, and a 1% surcharge on corporate stock buybacks. Guess what? Let me let you in the room. Come, come with me. Let me pull back the curtain for you. Ain't nobody going to pay more. You know why? Because there's not a billionaire in the world that's pulling in income. They don't get paid income. They make their money on capital gains. They hold assets. Nobody is getting stroked a $25 million check as a salary. They'll never see that 10% more or that 5% surtax or the 3% over 25 million. Nobody in their right mind is taking income. They make their money via capital gains. 
and nobody is touching the capital gains tax. On top of that, the corporations, they're not going to pay more. Why? Because they don't have profits. Because the best companies in our society are simply taking the profits and they're reinvesting it. If you are a cash machine and you are actually taking it as dividends or you're not reinvesting it, it means you have no plan. It means you have no ability to reinvest the capital to actually grow your business. So if you run a business and you simply sit on the cash and book high levels of profit, it means that it is unlikely that your business is gonna grow in the future. So that was the knock against company after company after company. Tesla, they're not paying more. Amazon, they're not paying more. They reinvest the profits to ensure that their business will continue to grow. These are world-class operators that we are watching play out here. And so this idea that those virtual pitchforks came out and the politicians, we got them, we got them, we screwed the billionaires, we got the corporations, and they come back and they yell and scream about how victorious they are. No, they didn't. They're simply playing the game. Because when the politicians leave office, they're gonna go and ask these people for jobs. They're gonna go to them begging them for a job. They're gonna go and build lobbying firms. It's a revolving door. It's all nonsense. It's both sides of the aisles too. It's not just one side. So if they really wanted to have some sort of impact, they wouldn't say, oh, let's tax people that make $25 million in income. I would love for them to show me one person who pulls a $25 million salary that they've been trying to tax higher. Nobody gets a $25 million of income. It's all capital gains. It's all asset appreciation. And just as we expected, there's no mark to market. They're not gonna tax unrealized gains. It's a stupid idea, and anyone that's actually a proponent of it, you should have them go check in and literally get an intelligence test. On top of that, they're not going to get corporate profits because it doesn't matter what they do to the corporate profit rate, uh, a tax rate, the higher that they put the rate, the more likely it is that there's not gonna be any profits because companies are going to be financially incentivized to ensure there are no profits. So ultimately, this was all a waste of time. It's literally a waste of time. We can work as much as we want to continue to take in more and more revenue into the federal government. We've been doing it for over a decade now. Every year, they take in more federal tax income than ever, but they don't take it from the richest people in the society. They end up imposing these rules and they drive it right to the people in the middle of the economy. The rich people spend hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars a year to ensure that their corporations and their personal lives pay as little tax as possible. You could make the tax rate 90% and they're still not going to pay it. But the people who are below them, the people who are the everyday Americans who start to have any level of success, they're the ones who get decimated by this. They can't afford the lawyers and the accountants. They're not as educated in terms of how to actually get around all of these stupid rules that get placed and use the tax code to their advantage. And on top of that, what you end up finding is that regardless of whether they actually pay it or they find a way not to, the government's gonna spend more money anyways. And so $1.75 trillion is an absurd amount of money. But we talk about it like it's literally monopoly money. So then we get to the best part. Janet Yellen said, I don't think these investments will drive up inflation at all. Comical. First of all, they're fully paid for. Comical. And not by imposing taxes on anyone earning less than $400,000. Comical. But by asking corporations, high income individuals to pay their fair share. Comical. And by investing in the internal revenue service so that they can boost compliance, which has fallen to low levels. We have a huge amount of uncollected tax revenue, a tax gap that's estimated at $7 trillion over a decade. Now, I'll be the first one to say that, of course, if you owe taxes, pay them. Do the thing that you're supposed to do. But at the same time, if we honestly believe that no one who earns less than $400,000 a year is going to have to pay more taxes, then why is it that many of the largest individuals from a financial standpoint on Wall Street, they take less than $400,000 salaries. So we're literally saying that multiple heads of banks who have less than $400,000 salaries aren't going to get higher taxes? Well, what happens when the tech executives who get paid a dollar or who take a $50,000 salary, 
they also are not going to pay higher taxes. It's the entire point. If you are sitting at home and you only have income, you have to figure out a way to make money via capital gains. You have to own assets. That is how people get ahead in this economy and in this environment. If you simply have income, they are going to find every possible way they can to tax the hell out of it. But they're never going to get the people who understand owning assets is how you build wealth, not by simply getting a higher income. Now, on top of all of this, as if it's the icing on the cake, do you really think if we don't spend $1.75 trillion, inflation will just chill? This is absurd. If you go back to 2020, all we heard, we're going to spend trillions of dollars, but inflation won't be a problem. You can't print trillions of dollars and you can't spend trillions of dollars and not get higher levels of inflation. That's not how it works. And so now we sit with multiple months over 5% inflation and they pretend like they never said it before. Are Americans really that dumb that we forget what they said 12 months ago? Because it's the exact same thing that they said last year. Don't worry about inflation. It's not going to happen. Well, now we're at 5% and now they're literally knocking on the door to spend another $1.75 trillion. And I don't believe them. And neither does anybody else who understands how market works.